Yo. What up? All right. Um, so, uh, we got another one from the Ricky Gervais show. Hmm. Okay. Okay. Ricky Gervais show. Yes. Yes. Yeah, man. What we got? This is episode two, season two, Doppelganger. Okay. <laughs> okay. Doppelgangers. Doppelgangers. Yeah, man. Like you're, you're, you're uh, another you. <laughs> you're double or some shit. Exactly. Exactly. That's scary. You think there's another you somewhere out there in the world? Maybe, but I I think there it may be, but I think there's another there was there's been another me in like all of time, like in the past. I think there's been somebody that looked exactly like me. <laughs> okay. Maybe a little different, but Okay, but no longer living, so there's no one like in Alive? Yeah, alive that looks like you know. I don't know. I don't okay. think there's anybody alive that looks like me. Yeah. I, I hope th- not. Yeah, 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 definitely, definitely. I mean me either. Like right now, currently, I don't think there's nobody out there that looks like me. I agree. You know, one of a kind. Hmm. Think about that. Well, let's go. Let's see what they got to say about double games. Okay. For the past few years, Ricky Gervais. For the past few years, Ricky Gervais, Stephen Merchant, and Carl Pilkington have been meeting regularly for a series of pointless conversations. This is one of them. Testing. Is that all right? (laughs) You got papers on. Hello, and welcome to the Ricky Gervais Show with me, Ricky Gervais, Stephen Merchant. Hello. And the little round headed buffoon that is Carl Pilkington. All right. Now, Carl, I know you're fascinated by the concept of the doppelganger, of seeing someone who looks exactly like you. Yeah. Jake has emailed in. He says, Carl, if you could spend a day with an exact replica of you, OK, so somehow they've cloned you, Carl, and they've got, you've got him for one day, what would you do with this? What would you, what would you make him do? What, would you, uh, what conversation would you have with him? <laughs> what would you do? Is there anything you could... Mm-hmm. You know, how would you utilise yeah. him for one day? Well, they'd both say, I'm not bothered, and that would be the end of conversation. <laughs> yeah. What would do me head in is, does it does think the same way, look the same way, exactly dress the same? Yeah. <laughs> How would I know which one I was? <laughs> <laughs> because you'd be you. That's amazing. No, no, no. How would I know which That's one I was? That's incredible. <laughs> no, because that is the most stupid thing ever stupid? said by a human being. <laughs> Can we get the Guinness Book of Records on this? It has anyone... Anywhere in the world said anything more stupid than how would I know which one was me? But think about it, this other person's uh, going, All right, thanks for uh, <laughs> meeting up and that. And I go, Hang on a minute. Uh, no, you, you came to me. And then Suzanne would come home and she wouldn't know the difference. <laughs> and then suddenly you'd start doubting yourself. And you'd go, Should I be leaving? Or, So, how do I know if I am that real one if he knows what I know? But you know who you are because you're yeah, experiencing it. But he'd be it. saying that because he'd say, yeah, it's a bit weird. But isn't you it? know the truth, you idiot. <laughs> How would I know which one I was? So anyway, <laughs> but bear in mind, you what would you do? You can pass him off as yourself. What would you do? Would you play tricks? With you? Would you, uh, you know, uh, you could what? be in two places at once. Would you do stings? Would you do scams? No, because it would only end up getting me into trouble, won't it? Because people won't believe that there's another one like me. <laughs> <laughs> Otherwise, everyone would be saying that when they get caught robbing. They go, oh, "It wasn't me. It was me doppelganger." <laughs> it can only. I wouldn't want it to be honest. It's a, again, it's a bit of a headache, isn't it? Because he could be going off going mental, causing all sorts of trouble, and you're going, well, you pack it in. <laughs> and he's going, what? What are you on about? But then that wouldn't happen, <laughs> would it? Because he's being me, so he'd be sat wherever I am anyway. Because hmm. he'd want to do what I want to do. So, pointless. Uh... But I still wouldn't want it. <laughs> It's unbelievable. That was a conversation with himself. That yeah. was amazing. That was, we, like, that was like experiencing what it would be like there was two cars. <laughs> yeah, he was we, a discussion with himself. We could have left in yeah. that time and come back, and he'd be arguing still. What does this mean? Does this mean... <laughs> <laughs> does this mean, though, that I could just sit at home and not do anything and just send me out on... Yes. Damn. And any, any, when, he, when he's seen something happen, I'm seeing it. No, 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 no. no. You're separate people. You're separate people. 
I mean, it's not a doppelganger. Then, well, you're identical twins. Then you found out identical twins, and he's got the, exactly yeah. the same input as you. I mean, it's not a real question, is it? It's just a little again. But I said to you the other week about <laughs> twins and that. I, it's, I, I wouldn't like to have a twin. It's, a, it's all right when you're a kid, but unless you're a Siamese twin, even they don't even look alike. Do they just stuck together? You don't go. <laughs> don't they look like each other? They have different haircuts. They don't. They don't carry that thing on, do they? That like normal twins do. Like normal twins, the mums say have the same haircut, wear the same shirt. Siamese twins never look the same. They just got their arse stuck together. <laughs> Again, it's a dialogue in his own head. It's unbelievable. A <laughs> little bitty man. <laughs> okay, Carl. This is a a, a logical conundrum um, to a certain extent. There's a little bit of lateral thinking because, uh, but there is only one right answer. Um, now, the pressure here isn't to get this right. The pressure is when I've told you the answer to then understand it. Because I've still, when I've explained this to people, I've laid out for them, they still can't quite get the concept. Um, okay, so there's two doors, Carl. Yeah. One leads to heaven, right. one leads to hell. Yeah. Okay, they're identical. You can't tell them apart. Okay, 50 50. Right. Obviously, you want to go to heaven, I assume. Right, there's two guards, <laughs> identical guards, guarding each door, OK? Right. The one guarding hell always tells a lie. The one guarding heaven always tells the truth. You have to ask one question to find out which, which is which and then go through the door you want. <laughs> what question do you ask? I've only got one. Yeah. And what, one to, to both? No, one to either of them. You don't know which one's which, though. So what question do you ask? What question do you ask? Mm. I don't know. Why can't I ask, like, both of them one? <laughs> because it's because not the, the rules. rules are you can only ask one. There aren't actually two doors labelled heaven and hell, Carl. That's this a leap of imagination here. And I, I've, I've, I've definitely got to answer... I've got to ask them a question. I can't just sort of have a feel of the door to see <laughs> if there's any heat or anything. <laughs> They're identical. You stand a few yards away. You cannot tell from the outside of these doors which is which. What question do you ask? I can't look through the keyhole or anything. There's no keyhole. anywhere near them. Is the other um, one lying? Let's imagine there's a small lying? rope that prevents you from getting anywhere near, rather like outside a nightclub. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Is so the other door stuck there? Yeah. They both look the same. They're both smiling. Yeah. But one of them's... Not really smiling, really. He's trying to make me make a mistake, isn't he? Well, he's just going to lie when you ask him a question, if you ask him. So what's the point in asking <laughs> a question? Do I know one of them's going to lie? Yeah. But would they be neighbours <laughs> like yeah. this? Would they be that close? <laughs> uh, Why? I mean, when you ask him a question, then, you know, you know, you know, that, you know, you know, I mean, what sure question these two guys yeah, get? Yeah, like, well, I'll tell you the answer. No, 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 I want to see if he can get it. He's almost there. Like a factual question. What question? I mean, no, he's not always there. What am I thinking? So, hang on, right. So you go up and you yeah, go. Um, you right, go hang on. Well, look, let's let's imagine that. Let's imagine Ricky and I are those two guys, okay? Right. <laughs> but we have to. Um, uh, uh, well, well, me and me and Steve decide which doors we're guarding, okay? Right. Uh, I'm. Uh, look, look away, Carl. <laughs> okay. Right, then. So we've decided, okay? One of us is guarding hell, and one of us is guarding heaven. Which question? You're going to ask, and who you're going to ask it to? Damn. Right. Um, I'll just say to you, Steve. I'll go. Uh, <coughs> uh, got some. Uh, got some post for God here. <laughs> <laughs> that's not a question. That's a statement. Right. You've got some post for God that's here. Well, that's not a question. Right, Maybe the question's coming. <laughs> I got. You got some post for God here. Yeah. Uh, and it needs to be signed. It's, it's not a question. Still not a question. No. Let so him finish. He's, he's God in because I need him to sign for this post. Is he in? Well, I can answer that as well if you want. Is he in? Go on. He's, yeah, he's in. He's behind my door. Do you want to answer it? Well, yes. Do you, want, do you want to get him? Just, uh... Well, I've only got one question. So you're, you're asking Steve, is God in? What's the answer? Yes. Ask me. Yes. <laughs> Look, lads, I'm just trying to do a job here. Uh, what am I going to do with this? Well, give it to me and I'll give it to God because he's behind my door. Steve? Yeah, give it to me and I'll take it into God because he's behind my door. You're an idiot. Like, let me tell you the answer. I'm guarding hell, by the way. I'm the devil. Steve's God, OK? So you asked me what, what Steve would say if you asked him what door he was guarding, and I'm going to lie. I know he'd say heaven, because he'd tell the truth, but I'm lying, so I'd say he'd say hell. 
So the, the, okay. the question is, if I was to ask the other one what door he was guarding, what would he say? And whatever the person answers is the door they're guarding. Wow. Steve, what door are you, are you looking after? Well, heaven. Yeah. <laughs> Why should I believe you? Because you don't know. No, that doesn't work. Because <laughs> you asked me the same and I'd say heaven as well. Right, so who do I believe? This is where you use your gut feeling, though, isn't it? This is what's like. <laughs> well, as opposed to the pure logic that Ricky's just used. I just think, because there's a lot of questions in life where you don't know the answer and you go, do you know what? I don't like the look of him. <laughs> so They're I, identical. Yeah, but they're still identical twins. You always get a little snidey one. <laughs> uh, uh, oh, chimpanzee, that is raining down! Uh, that's the jingle there for Carl's diary. Uh, here we are. Spoke to Ricky and his friend Glyn about art. I just don't get it. Ricky had some odd pictures on his walls. I don't have any pictures up in my flat because of the mirrored wall. <laughs> but I can't say I'm bothered. The mirrored wall, we should just explain what that is. When you moved into your flat, there was an enormous mirror on one wall. Was that right? We just got this flat and... Uh... You know, it's not a big flat, so I think the people who had it before us... He was a gay fella, right? Which was a bit like, oh, so you've been doing with that mirror and that. But that, that was a, what? <laughs> no, just, you so, know... Just, what? Uh, what? What has he been doing with the mirror? Well, What's just the, why, 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 no, what? it's just because they're quite sort of experimental in it, aren't they? And I don't know, what do you mean? What do they do? Well, I wouldn't do anything about it, but go on. No, what do you want? What? No, I don't. Experimental what do in what way? What do you mean, experimental? I just mean, you know, they'd be doing stuff... What? what? Whatever they do. Uh, chemistry, uh, chemistry set out, they'd be doing experiments. <laughs> no, just doing what... Singing I Am What I Am and just checking out their no, each the dance moves. I'm not having a go at uh, I'm just saying, like, they're doing what they're doing. Uh, which is annoying as well. You're not... Well. You're not no, I'm not... I'm not, well, I'm not this is what... Why... Well, but, what? Why are you worried about what a little gay fella was doing in your flat before you got it in the front of a mirror? I wasn't worried about it. Why I mean, are you thinking about what he's doing? Why are you fantasising what a little gay fella was doing in front of your mirror in your... I'm not, I'm not bothered. I'm just telling you what, why it was a bit odd that he had a mirror in there, right? But forget the, the history. But you've got a mirror in there now, haven't you? No, because what I did was... I, tried, I was going to take it down, and I thought, oh, it's a bit dangerous. This, <laughs> you know, it could crack and... Because it's the size it. of the whole wall, isn't it? It, t- it, t- it took up a whole wall. Right. right? Yeah. So like, when he's moving about everywhere, he's got a good view of it and that. But he's got this full wall of mirror, and I thought, I can't take that down. <laughs> and uh, I thought, what, what can I do? So I've just put wallpaper on it. Brilliant. And it looks <laughs> all right, you, you wouldn't know, what have you. But it means that I can't put any pictures up. That's, that's, all, that's all I'm saying. Because I've got a nail in it. And what don't you understand about art? What about art don't you understand? The concept? Uh, specifics? No, so, I, I, that's that's like when we when we were in London having a shop around at Christmas, and there was that picture of fruit for seven hundred quid. It's like, well, just get some fruit. You know what I mean? You can get some real fruit for three quid. Yeah. I understand that, but don't invent cameras then. One or the other. Do you know what I mean? That's what annoys me. Someone invents something, and then they go, "We've got to invent something else." Like the abstract thing. Why has someone gone? Oh, I can't have paintings anymore because. What do you think of Dali, going melting know. clocks and stuff? No. I mean, the first one was all right when he did the first clock, but then all the time he's just like, oh, I'll draw something and it's got a melting clock on it. I'll do a sheep, put, put one of them on it. Put, Have you seen his lobster telephone? That annoys me. Why? Telephone. Because he, I think what annoyed me more with that is when I heard about how it happened, um, he had some artist mate round, right? Mm. And um, I don't know what happened. Uh, they, oh, were okay. e- they were eating. That's a good, hell of an anecdote. No, no, what they were eating. They were eating some yeah. food and what have you. Yeah. Lobsters? And, uh, yeah, they, they were eating lobster. Oh, yeah. And uh, That's Andy. I don't know, the other artist, whoever it was, sort Got of phone. started saying, oh, you and your clocks and all that, right? Brilliant. And, um, they this started, didn't happen. They yeah. started arguing yeah. and he chucked some of the lobster. Bollocks. And it landed on the phone. bounced off his mate's head, went on the phone and they both looked at each other like, are you thinking what I'm thinking? And they, they, they brought out that phone as a bit of art. Things like that annoy me, uh, because it was them just messing about. That didn't happen. Just telling you what I know. I saw his, his work, each to their own, if that's what he's doing. I'm just saying I'm not putting my stamp of approval on it. Art should be there to tell a story, not just to have a splash of colour. Well, yeah. Suzanne like, like some art? Just like to, uh, it's a, Suzanne's not allowed to watch telly unless it's a favourite thing, otherwise she's got to talk to me about stuff. There's no art, there's no point, just wallpaper. <laughs> I'm just saying, we've got three three windows we can look out of. Right. Right? Stop looking at the walls, look out the window. (laughs) (laughs) 
My man phone said that my Auntie Nora, ah, uh, classic Auntie Nora, wanted me to look on the internet to find out what the weather will be like in Spain at the end of November. I don't know where she gets her money from. Two months ago, she was asking me, Dad, how much it would be to get her back garden astroturfed because she's sick and tired of the grass getting out of her. What does she want to do? Start a football team? <laughs> what does she want to back garden astroturf? She likes the sort of green look, but she doesn't like the headache that comes with it, so she's just <laughs> looking into getting that false grass put in there. Brilliant. Don't know how much it is. But. Went round to Ricky's and had some chicken curry that Ricky's girlfriend Jane had made. Ricky and Jane were going on holiday for a few days and had arranged for Glyn to come in and make sure the cat was okay while they were away. I'm sick of that cat. I was surprised that they hadn't paid for the little shit to go away with them on first class. <laughs> well, I'm getting a bit vitriolic in the uh, why diary. Does he, why doesn't he like the fact that I've got a cat and I, I love the cat? Why? why it's why... just everything in that house that you've got gets sort of special treatment and it's a cat. And it what do you mean you get me? special treatment? You, sometimes we put I, food down for it, and sometimes it gets uh, uh, on our lap and we stroke it. You don't what, just stroke it. We're you not sending it. it. You massage it. <laughs> you know, you're stressed out. Well, no, no it's out. good. For, it's, no, no, I'm not saying you stressed out. <laughs> At no point did I say you stressed out. You said, "What the fuck are you doing for? Is it stressed out or something?" I, 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 I like uh, touching my cat. To be honest with you, I don't like Ricky's cat. Oh, it, I can't believe because it. Because every time I go around there, it goes straight from the goonies. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's just like the lizard thing you've got. It's kind of, it's just sat there. You've bought it a big box, right, to be in. Right, one, one is a salamander, so it's an amphibian. Yeah. It's not a box, it's a big vivarium. Yeah, but what I'm saying and is... As it, and, and, and if you're going to criticise someone for just sitting there, having a round head and doing nothing with its life, people who live in glass houses, no, we've done this do one. You know, do you know what gets me, though, right, Steve? When I was there, I was looking at it, and I thought, is it dead? Right, so he's just sat there. Like, and the, it was thinking exactly the same fucking <laughs> thing. sat there, not moving, right? And then on the top of the box, is like a box full of crickets and stuff. <laughs> That's... it. It's, it's, it's food, yeah. right? But they were more active than the thing that it was going to feed. <laughs> Get rid of the lizard, keep them in there. More entertaining. <laughs> Don't understand it. A few months back, a girl who was having a kid showed me one of them scans of the kid that was in her. That's science gone mad, isn't it? Uh, I couldn't think of anything nice to say as it looked like a frog. <laughs> <laughs> Do you know why we've got to that point? What? Why, why have we got to see something that, that young? Why? Because people can keep an eye on the progress of the baby in the womb. Yeah, but why are they printing it out and stuff? That's some, surely that's for a doctor to see. Well, that's just an added bonus for people who are interested in such things. That's like saying, why do you take pictures of anything? No, no but what, what I mean is, why... At what point are we going to stop? Are we going to start sort of X-raying the fella's testicles and saying, well, there it is at a really young age. <laughs> well, where, where, where are we going to stop? It's, big, it's just horses for courses, isn't it? Some people like to have a record of their baby in the womb. They That's like right. to show their baby. They, they, sit, they, about it. they oh, sit down and they, they show the friends the, the slideshow. There That's the birth. Oh, that's the conception. Oh, look, Ron's going a bit mad there, isn't he? <laughs> but why do I need to see this? This is what I'm saying. It was an awkward situation because she was happy with it. I was like, oh, God. <laughs> you know what I mean? It was an odd looking thing. I couldn't say, oh, it looks like you, because that would be a diss. <laughs> well, Rick, you're not the only one who's been away. I know you've been off working, but yeah. I, at long last, have taken a bit of leisure time. Go on. And uh, <laughs> you've probably heard of the Rio de Janeiro Carnival. Only one of the uh, the hottest uh, you know events in the world oh, calendar. Yeah. <laughs> imagine me down there. Oh, oh Rio, God. you can imagine. Did not know oh. where I God almighty, were you like uh, Paul the Party Animal Park? He would not have been able to keep up views with me. God, what did you do? What oh, did you get up to? Oh, let me tell you right now. Um, day one, I almost drowned. <laughs> day two, I got a foot infection and spent the day in the hospital. And the rest of the time, I had diarrhoea. <laughs> so that's uh, that's the, that was a hell of a that was a hell of a time. Carnival. Yeah, yeah. I did. Uh, I was able to watch some of the carnival on TV, <laughs> oh, and it looked brilliant. <laughs> it looked did amazing. It? Um, I didn't actually... I, it was difficult to make out because the TV wasn't actually in my room. Because <laughs> um, <laughs> in an effort to save money, I wasn't staying in a hotel. I was staying with a bunch of other people in some kind of, like, someone's <laughs> flat that they let out. And uh, so I had to look, I had to watch the TV. It was, like, from my window, watching a neighbour's TV. 
And of course, when they change the channel, you know, often join the juicy bits, I couldn't see anything. And um, so, but they look really good. I'm bunged up at the moment just so I can get through the show. But I've just been on a 12 hour flight, and it is terrifying being on a flight when you know that any moment you could go. Because you know how the problem is sometimes the toilet's free, and sometimes in, you've got to queue up. And the worst bit is that, that sort of half an hour just before you land when they say the toilets are out of bounds now. <laughs> <laughs> I'd say I went twice before that in quick succession. The woman sat next to the toilet. She was she didn't know what was going on, the noises and stuff in there. And I was because I was really oh. panicky. Oh, Christ. And um and so of course then on the whole flight uh, as we're landing, I'm just I'm really petrified because I'm thinking this could. I, mean, I packed a pair of underpants and jeans in the in the bag in the hold all just in case it all went. And oh, I was no. really because I hate flying anyway. And I hate landing because it's the most terrifying moment of the journey. Then it really was rumbling. And I was thinking I got to get out of here. Of course, you know you know when you in a hurry, everything suddenly everything makes you angry. The little old lady in front of me who's just hopping <laughs> along off the gangplank. Go yeah. away! Yeah. You know, just really with your with your with your bad hips and yeah, your bad and legs. Yeah, and your Zimmer frame. I know you've been through a war, but get out of my way. <laughs> yeah. And just anyone who could have even <laughs> passes you, oh, you just you oh. And uh, so I, yeah, I managed to get there just in time. Got into the t- and it all went off. Man alive, <laughs> it was it was grim. But th- that was that was not anything compared with the first couple of days. Because the first day I was. I went for a walk. Ibadan Beach is famous for just the beautiful, beautiful people that gather there. There's so many beautiful women in Rio, it made me angry. I was angry that these women were so attractive and that, you know, none of them were even looking at me. So but anyway, I'm on the beach because I, I was shopping and I needed a wee. Right, and we went for a quick impromptu swim and I thought, oh, we in the, in the sea. Just think of him on this beach, right? He's diary. Well, I'm wearing great big long shorts because I'm not going to try and compete with these boys. Cause they and are... you are, <laughs> could I say this, the whitest man yeah. I've ever met in my life. Yeah. I mean, with his shirt off, you can see his heart like a newborn fish. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, this is the thing. As I went into the sea to have a wee, there was a discussion about this. As I went into the sea to have a wee. <laughs> in well, a little tray. I see, there was a discussion about this because I'm very much of the opinion that you should take your trunks down. And some people, uh, some of my friends are saying, just do it in your trunks and let's see the sea just wash it away. What a hell of a carnival. Well, <laughs> I think that's I'm against that. I've always uh, been against that. Against that in swimming pools, everything you know. So I, so I'm, no, th- I'm against pissing in swimming pools. Full stop. It doesn't matter whether you do get in, take your trunks down or let it, don't piss <laughs> in, swimming in the pool. sea. Yeah, well, fine. Yeah, fine, okay. Uh, right, so, fish, fish do it. So, so anyway, so I'm in the sea trying to trying to urinate, and I so I kneel because I'm obviously very tall. So it's tricky to get deep enough for the water to to mask what you're up to. So I tried to kneel down in the water, right? And, and I got the, I got John Thomas out, but then the water swept out again and just left me on the beach. <laughs> so, but luckily my, my back was to it, everyone's no one saw. So um, so I so I, I walked. Think of the funniest sight than Steve Merchant on his knees with his little John Thomas out. I don't know how big it is. I've seen it. But with me, I imagine it's in proportion to the rest yeah. of it. Is it? I know. Wish. Um, that's all, all I'll say is I've been a little shortchanged. But um, so I, so then I got up and I waded a bit deeper in, right? And uh, now I was sort of, I was, I was trying. I got it out, but what I didn't realise is that the waves just off the beach are really just uncontrollable. You never know what's going to happen. So suddenly I see this giant wave coming towards me, crashing towards me, and I got the cock out and everything, and it grabs this wave, comes over me, and lifts me up, flips me up in the water. Right, and I'm floundering around, I can't see anything because, of course, I had to take my glasses off <laughs> to go in the sea because I didn't want, I didn't want to lose them. Oh God! So, so I, so I floundering around, and I'm wait, genuinely getting scared because I, as I try to get into shore, the wave just pulls me back again. So I'm waving to my friends on the beach. But what With I everything. Well, what I don't realise is that because I'm wearing my because well, I'm not wearing my glasses, I don't realise that I've been dragged along the beach some way, and I'm not actually waving to my friends. So there's like a bunch of these beautiful women on Ipanema Beach watching a pasty white man waving with his cock out. And, and what annoyed me was my friends were laughing. And that Steve, really, really angers if me. if I'd have been there, I would have burst. But why wouldn't you have come running? Would you have come running in and helped me? Oh, well, I couldn't have saved you with your glasses off and your knob out. When, if, I, if I ever save you, I want you to be fully dressed with your glasses on. So you'd have just let me go. You'd have, that would have been what you'd said to my parents. He had his knob out and his glasses off. There was no way I was going to... I can't think of a funnier sight. Oh. oh yeah. Yeah. Yep. Sounds like Steve had a bad trip to Brazil, <laughs> man. Damn. <laughs> right, shit. Steve's so tall, he could have just stood up. 
And just stand up. <laughs> He's like 11 feet tall. Oh, man. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. He was going through too much to try to pee in the water, man. <laughs> <laughs> you do not take your pants fully down when you're trying to pee in the water. That's a no-no. What the hell? Especially in the public pool. Yeah, that's probably how you got <laughs> sick. Something probably went up in there. <laughs> Uh, Turn his stomach out. <laughs> That's nasty. Oh, man. Nigga, as Ricky said, Ricky said, this is the, you are the whitest man I know. If he takes off his shirt, you can see his heart. <laughs> <laughs> like E.T. <laughs> oh, man. Ah, shit. Yeah. Yeah, man, Ricky's funny, man. <laughs> Oh man, and they asked him about the doppelganger. He said, How would I know which one I am? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that was the stupidest question. <laughs> but I guess, you know, you never know. Oh, you man. never know. Yeah. Who's been caught with that situation? That yeah. <laughs> I would love to have a doppelganger, though. Or actually, I would love to have like a clone <laughs> so that okay. I can make him, you know, understand that you are my clone. <laughs> okay. You're gonna do what I tell you to do. You can go to work while I stay here. <laughs> yeah. Bring back the money to me. You won't need any. Hell yeah. <laughs> you don't need nothing. Those women out there you see, you don't want those. <laughs> oh. No. Your room is the closet. I will feed you. <laughs> <laughs> Ain't even gotta stand up in the corner. <laughs> yeah. Your room is the closet. <laughs> Nigga, make sure you go get some exercise <laughs> once a week. <laughs> you I don't want that nigga taking tomorrow. <laughs> yeah, lock that nigga in the closet before you kill me in my sleep. <laughs> Take over my life. <laughs> Gotta keep them niggas. <laughs> nah, you, that that shit wouldn't yeah. fly with a clone. Cause then he would turn. He'd be like, "This nigga treat me like a slave." Yeah. <laughs> wouldn't work. <laughs> wouldn't work. Imagine at that point. If he had a clone that was that smart to work for you and everything like that, yeah. Eventually. <laughs> this nigga going to work and doing that. <laughs> <laughs> nigga, come on, damn man, hard day at work. <laughs> Get your ass on the clock. <laughs> You're done. And ain't no power off button. <laughs> Get your ass in the closet. I just want to <laughs> sit down and relax. Ain't to eat? <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> can I watch I TV? <laughs> Please. You can't be your best friend too. I just gotta work. I just got you a date. Are you gonna call it? Here's the number, please. Let me. Can I go? Can we get a two bedroom apartment? 